Well, these are strange times, uh, aren't they? And, um, you know, down the years, whenever I've written to you, perhaps my Christmas letter or my spring letter, I've said that I feel that uh, you're family. And I honestly do feel that. And, uh, and although I know that we're inundated with messages from all kinds of people, I just wanted to speak to you uh, as, I, as I would to, to, to a, a, a family very, very uh, uh, briefly. You know, all kinds of people will be in all kinds of situations. Uh, some will be beside themselves with worry about finance and paying the mortgage, paying the rent. Uh, others will be more secure financially. Some will be worried about elderly parents or elderly friends. Some will be elderly themselves. <laughs> I'm elderly. Uh, some will be worried about kids and look, all kinds of situations. Behind all those front doors, we, we all have our, our stories. And I think I just wanted to, to, in some ways, I used to with my kids in this moment, put my arms on them and say, look, I will always be there for you. We will be there for you in whatever way we can in care for the family. Whether you're a parent with a, a child with additional needs, whether you're single parents struggling, whether even now you're going through bereavement, if your marriage is in trouble, we will be there for you. It's not as easy as it was a couple of weeks ago where we split up a bit and working from home, but by the benefit of technology, we can still serve you in whatever way we can. And we meet regularly in whatever you believe or don't believe. And I know all kinds of shades of people are our supporters and friends, but we will be praying for you. We'll be praying for you, frankly, whether you like it uh, uh, or not. Sometimes that's uh, all we've got, but it is a, a powerful place to come, the place of, uh, of prayer. You know, some years ago, many of you know, uh, Dan and I had only been married for a couple of years and we invited a guy who was practically homeless to stay one night uh, and he never left. Ronnie's been with us over uh, 40 years. The kids have come and gone with kids of their own, but Ronnie's still with us. He's, he's 75 now. And when I'd been in the law practice for a little while, he got a job as a dustman and I used to drop him off at the dust yard and then go into the law practice and he spent all his life in care, never had a family of his own. And when I got home at night, he'd always be sat in the same chair, smiling. And one night I said, Ron, you're always smiling when I come home. What amuses you so much? Robbie said, when you drop me off at work in the mornings, the other men said to me, hey, who's that brings you to work in the car? And I say, oh, that's my lawyer. I have thought so much about that down the years. I don't think he was proud of being taken to work by a lawyer who, who would be. Do you know what I think it was? Ronnie had never had a mother take him first day of school. Never had a dad say, how did it go on the big school today, son, when he was 11? And now he's a man and somebody is at the gate. And we all need somebody at the gate. Do you know, this current crisis is reminding us all, rich and poor and young and old, and we're not in control. We, we, we need, frankly, we need each other. And my personal belief is more than ever, we need uh, God, uh, the touch of God in our lives. We all need somebody at the gate. And no doubt you will be at the gate for people in your family and in your street and in your road and for those who are, are, are shut in as much as you can. And so far as we can, we will be at the gate uh, for you. So precious friends and supporters, dear family in that sense, uh, thank you for all you are to us and we will continue to be all we can be uh, to you. Uh, may God bless you.